Hi, it's Amy from Cakes With Faces. Now I get a lot of messages from people who are planning their trips to Japan. And I know from them and from the survey in my last video that lots of you are interested in anime, Pokemon, characters, and all of that. And I also know lots of you are interested in going to Akihabara, but it does seem like fewer people know about Nakano Broadway. I do have a couple of vlogs from there, but they're quite old and I don't really feel like they do a very good job of introducing it. So that's what we're doing today. I did originally intend to film this video in Japan, but as you know, at the moment, that's not really working out. So sorry if some of the footage isn't very good. Some of it's from my old camera and a bit shaky. I'm working with what I got. I will be filming new videos there when I can get back to Japan, so if you want to see them, hit subscribe and hit the notification bell and one day they'll pop up in your feed. So Nakano Broadway is a shopping mall on the west side of Tokyo. It's got lots of shops selling figures, collectibles, games and all sorts of just strange stuff. It's definitely worth a look if you're into anime, characters or if you're a fan of pretty much any cult thing. You really never know what you'll find. I think you know if you're into that sort of thing. One of my friends went there and said they thought it was just full of a load of old tat but it's interesting tat, the sort of tat you want to fill your shelves with. It also has some great food options, more about them later. It might seem like it's a bit remote all the way over on the edge of the map, and I always think it's further away than it is, but really it's only five minutes by train from Shinjuku, so it's a really quick journey. And the mall is right by the station, you can't get lost. I'll tell you how to get there at the end of the video. So onto the shops and what there is there. It's a great place for buying anime figures. In my experience, it's slightly cheaper than Akihabara and there's a great selection. There's lots of secondhand stores selling figures and my favorite, the glass cabinet shops where people rent a cabinet to sell their collections. So you really could find anything, even if it's not recent. People often ask me, can you find figures from this particular anime or game? And the answer is, if it's ever been made, there's always a chance you'll find it there because people could be selling anything. Some people worry about buying secondhand figures or merch, but in my experience, it's all in excellent condition. I don't know if it's something about the culture in Japan or if it's a different standard that people expect, but all the secondhand stuff has been in great condition, clean and looks pretty much as new. The only thing is they might not have the boxes and if that's the case they wrap them up in bubble wrap for you to take home. I know some people like to collect the boxes but I've found I often throw them away anyway because they can be really bulky and take up quite a lot of room in your suitcase. So quite often I'll take the figures out of the boxes and wrap them carefully in my clothes to take home. There's lots of shops selling brand new figures as well, and lots of those shops that sell the prize figures from the UFO catchers. So if you can't win them in the claw machines, you can just buy them. You often see the same figures dotted around the different arcades, and you'll often find those ones in these shops as well. They're quite cheap. I wanna say about 1200 to 1500 yen, although probably like everywhere, prices might have gone up a bit by now. There's also shops selling gachapon that have been opened. So they're not in their capsules, they're just in tiny bags and they have walls covered in them. There are so many, you could spend ages hunting through them all. They usually cost slightly more than from the machines, but not too much, only about 100 yen or so, depending how rare they are. They're good if you're looking for the last one to complete your set or if you're looking for an older set that isn't around in the machines anymore or if you don't want a chance getting duplicates from the machine. There's also a little shop with nothing but Gatchapon machines and there's a couple of games arcades on the ground floor as you go in. As well as anime figures, you'll find all sorts of collectibles. Pokemon figures, Sophie V vinyl toys, models of Godzilla, robots, vintage toys and all sorts of stuff. There's shops selling books, manga, things like game art books. There's a branch of Mandarake. There's video games and a cosplay shop. There's also a few made cafes. They're mostly outside in these streets to the side of the Sun Mall. That area doesn't really have shops like the ones inside. It's more restaurants and izakaya. It's kind of interesting to wander around. It's like a grid of alleyways. It's pretty quiet in the daytime and gets a bit more lively towards the evening. 
I spent ages wandering around this area on my very first trip to Japan, looking for a Captain Jack Sparrow cake shop, which is run by a man who dresses as a pirate every day, and it looked fantastic. That was before I understood how confusing Japanese addresses are. But as it turns out, the shop had sadly closed down, so it wasn't even there anymore. But in Nakano Broadway, don't worry about finding out the names or looking up particular shops. Just wander around and you'll find everything, no problem. There's four floors and a basement level, which is food. When you get there, first you go through the Sun Mall, which is a regular Japanese shotengai, a covered shopping street with normal shops and places to eat. And you might be thinking, what's so special about this? Why have I come here? But go straight on through the Sun Mall and you'll come to the entrance of Nakano Broadway. As you go further in and start going up the floors, you'll find more and more good stuff. There are some regular shops, but most of them have collectibles and things just like Akihabara. I'd say Nakano Broadway has more retro, niche and obscure things than Akihabara, which is more focused just on anime. The main difference is that Nakano Broadway is a lot plainer and has much less of an exciting vibe than Akiba, Akihabara. In Akiba, the buildings are really colourful, the shops are blaring anime music, there's a really buzzing atmosphere with loud arcades and it's quite intense. Whereas Nakano Broadway is more retro style, it does feel a little bit beige and outdated. It's not very shiny and it's more laid back. So I say, if you're into all these things, definitely go to Akihabara for the experience. It's a really fun place. If you like anime, you'll definitely enjoy it. That is number one. But if you have time, go to Nakano Broadway as well. Especially if you're into slightly obscure figures and collectibles, there's a lot to hunt through and slightly lower prices. It's a great place to go on a rainy day because everything's indoors, you could spend an afternoon there and there's lots of places to eat, which brings us on to food. There are lots of places along the Sun Mall, which is the one you get to first from the station. There's sushi bars, there's one of my favourite bakeries which has a delicious selection of items including this maple syrup melon pan. There's a shop selling curry pan. There's Okashi no Machioka which is a shop where you can find flavoured Kit Kats and all sorts of novelty sweets, biscuits and chocolate. That one's great for presents for people back home. There's Cozy Corner, a cake shop with delicious cream cakes and gatos. It's so hard to pick which one to get. For me, the strawberry shortcake is a must. It's actually really light. And that grid of alleyways next to the Sun Mall has lots of restaurants, lots of small places, although not all of them are open till the evening. Inside Nakano Broadway, the basement level is a food level, and that's where you can find that famous giant rainbow ice cream that you might have seen in videos and on Instagram. They've got so many different flavors of soft serve, and if you're too intimidated to try the giant one, they do also serve regular size cones. There's food stands with things like udon noodles and there's a kind of supermarket with loads of sushi bento boxes to take away at amazing prices. When I first went to that one I was kind of surprised because I couldn't find the till to pay but then I realized that the shop was on both sides of the walkway so if you found something you wanted on that side you have to walk out of the shop and walk over to the other side to pay. In some countries people would just be stealing everything but it shows that Japan is honest enough to have that sort of setup. And if you do get food to take away there are a few benches in that square outside the station where you can sit and eat. Next, how to get there. To get to Nakano Broadway you need to go to Nakano Station. Take the Chuo line from Shinjuku Station, it's only five minutes. That's actually the same line you take to get to Mitaka and Kichijoji for the Studio Ghibli Museum. So you could pair them together and go to both in the same day. And the next stop along the line from Nakano is Koenji, which is really good if you like thrift stores. I've got a vlog from there. It's really laid back. There's lots of little cafes and bars. It doesn't feel as much like being in the big city. You can also get to Nakano on the subway on this light blue line, the Tozai line. To give you an idea, how long it takes. If you're on the east side of the city, it takes about 20 minutes from Nihonbashi. Once you get to the station, take the north exit, go straight forwards, and there you are at the entrance to the Sun Mall, and that feeds directly into Nakano Broadway. There's even a covered walkway across the square from the station, so it really is perfect for a rainy day. 
Next, when to go. I would recommend going in the afternoon. If you go in the morning, if you get there too early, the shops won't be open yet. They don't open that early. And like many shops in Japan, they're open quite late, at the moment till 8 p.m. A lot of the shops are also closed on a Wednesday. I went once on a Wednesday and lots of things were open, but as I went upstairs, there were quite a lot of shops with their shutters down that were closed. That day might change in the future, so check that when you go. So that's Nakano Broadway. There's lots of stuff to hunt through. It's a great place to find figures, obscure merch, and some great treats like that melon pan from my favorite bakery. Hopefully I'll be able to bring you a video from Nakano Broadway at some point, so subscribe if you wanna catch it. And until then, I'll keep bringing you new Japan videos every other Thursday. So I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.